Well, 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 1. And so I ended out of Ephesians chapter 6 and verse all the way 10 through 17, or 10 through, I think I read all the way through 18. Um, and 15. So, it was about our, our the weapons of our warfare. And it was about the, the shield of faith and all uh, and the, you know, our, our, our battle is, 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 uh, Trying to get my vision. <laughs> but anyway, what I'm saying is a prayer. <laughs> I wanted to continue on in prayer now. When we found out who our enemy is and the way his antics are, the way he his tactics are. We know his tactics. The Bible reveals his tactics. But our defense our defense is in our prayer time with the Lord. In our, in our time in the Word, corporately and individually. Yes. Amen. Amen. We've been given authority. We need to exercise our authority. So whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And we've been given the use of His name. We've been given the use of His name. And at that name, every knee shall bow. So whenever devil may come your way, that knee, you speak in the name of Jesus. Right. You get, that knee has yes. to bow. That, yes. that, what they're doing, in there, it has to stop. That's it right. has to cease. Yes. Yes. We must grow in our faith. <coughs> Be mighty in him. <clears throat> Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Second Timothy, or First Timothy chapter 2, <laughs> in verse 1. I exhort therefore... Now, first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Lord. So I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. All men. So we're not here for ourselves alone. But we are here for the souls of men. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So first of all, supplications. Supplications are heartfelt petitions arising out of deep personal need. And it's continued, it's also continued Strong, incessant pleading until the prayer is answered. Yes, yes. Until the prayer is answered. Hallelujah. Like in Luke chapter 1 and verse 8. Chapter 18, 1 and verse 1 through 18. Let's say. So Luke chapter 18. And he spake this parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not faint. Saying, there was a city, if there was any city, a judge, which feared not God, neither regarded men. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of my adversaries. And he would not for a while, but afterward... He said within himself, though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will, I will avenge her, least by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge said. 
And shall not God avenge his own elect? We would be his elect, his chosen, separated, holy, set apart, which cry out day and night unto him. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry out day and night unto him? Though he bear long with them, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, here it is, shall he find faith on the earth. When the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith on the earth. Will he find faith in the Lord? When the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith on the earth. In prayer, petitions. Bring your petitions before the Lord and do Amen. not give up. Do not quit. Continue, continue, continue to press through until you see it happen. I believe that sometimes people people don't see what they're believing God for. Well, it must not mean God's will. No, you press in until you get it. If your will, your will will line up with his will. He's placed that in. If you're truly a born again child of God, then you're not going to be praying something that's being against his word. And if it's not against his word, then he's, it's all yes and amen. His promises are yes and amen. So you know that he will answer. When you come in faith. Because he said he would supply all our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So that if you have a need, just like this woman had a need. And she came continually, incessantly. And weary in this guy. He goes, oh, she keeps coming to me. She's wearing me. I'm going to just answer this. I'm just going to do it. I'm going to venture, adventure of her adversaries. God will avenge you of your adversaries, which is sin. He will avenge you. Your adversaries are not people. You know, Satan may use people, but it's ultimately Satan, because your, your, your fight is not against flesh and blood, but against right. principalities, powers, That's right. That's right. and wicked forces in high places. So we're going to fight the good fight of faith. And trust him and believe him. <clears throat> the next one in petitions then is prayers. Prayers, we mean properly to exchange wishes, desires. Literally to interact with the Lord by switching your human desires for his desires as he imparts faith. Accordingly, praying is closely interconnected with faith. Praying is closely interconnected with faith. So there's all manners of prayer, which we're kind of touching on those manners. But it's to properly, to exchange wishes and desires, literally, to interact with the Lord by switching your human desires for his desires. It's, it's really communion. It's, it's a relationship. You're fellowshipping with the Lord. And as you fellowship with him, he's giving you his desires. And your desires go to the wayside. Because you're with him. The more you hang out with him, the more you become like him. Amen. Amen. And you can spend time with him at any moment of any time. Amen. 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 Come on. 24-7. Yes. It's not this thing. Why do you get in the presence of God? Yeah. His presence goes with you. Amen. Hallelujah. His presence goes with you. Amen. And you're right there in the moment you begin to pray. You're right there. Yeah, that's right. Hallelujah. Now you might feel his presence. 
but it doesn't mean he's not there. You might not feel his power, but it doesn't mean his power is available to you. Yes, yes. To receive. Yeah. You see, his power will never wane. That's right. Because he is power, and he's giving you this power. Yes. The only thing that causes, quote, power to wane in our own mind is our faith. Yeah, that's right. It's our lack of faith. Right. Yes. Come on. Amen. But his power never changes. And we cannot just say, well, whoa, that was a powerful service just because we felt the presence right. of God. Yeah. The powerful service should be by what you see happen in the lives of people. Yes. Right. Yeah. Amen. 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 We still have to remember that. Yes. Just because we don't feel it doesn't mean. Because then what are you going to do when you're out right. ministering on the streets or you're out and about? God says, go lay on the desires become his desires. And then intercessions is the next one. Number, number three, the intersection. Inter intersections. Which really means intersection too. Like the Spirit of God. So intercessions. It's intersection which literally hits the mark. Intervention led by God. The Lord's specific prayer, or, or will, excuse me. It, it's really the Lord's specific will. The root of this term is to strike or hit the bullseye. Spot on. And it also means spirit-directed intervention. Refers to the petitions of believers as they fall in line with God's will, following His will, to act as His hand extended. Amen. To act as His hand Amen. extended. And His will is that we all walk in His love. To have sincere love of the brethren. To love our enemies. Bless those who persecute us. So as you come into direct line with him. See that's what we have. The spirit led prayer in the morning. Amen. And we just flow. And let the Holy Ghost intervene. And, and, and we just, we're coming into an intersection with God. Yeah. We're coming and the Holy Spirit is directing our it became so thick in here. It's, it's, it's still thick. Yeah. It's never lifted. Right. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. That you can be so caught up in, with him in prayer. He's giving you the direct directions. Exactly what his will is. What the spirit wills. What he desires. Because the spirit only brings forth the will of the will yeah. of the Father. Amen. Amen. He only speaks what the Father says. That's what Jesus said. When the Holy Spirit comes, He will decree to you basically the Father's will. I paraphrase it. But that's what He does. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And we just come under that, that under the headship of the Lord Jesus Christ. Fully yeah. sure. Holy shit. Hallelujah. First <laughs> John four seventeen. And then it goes in and in and thanksgiving for all men. Thanksgiving for all men. First John four seventeen. Here it is our love made perfect that we may have boldness 
in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. Because as he is, so are we in this world. We've become, we've had, we have an intersection with him. Yielded to his will, his desires. And we are to demonstrate his love to all those. As he is, so are we in this world. Herein is our love made perfect. That we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in this world. And we give thanksgiving for all the men in the world. That they may be saved. That they may be delivered. That they may have an encounter with God. This is our battle. This is the fight that we're fighting. Yeah. We're fighting for the souls of men. Yeah. Ultimately, it really comes down to it. We're fighting for the souls of men. Yeah. Listen, if you get caught up in the battle of fighting for the souls of men, then the battle is in your life. God will take care of them all. As you're putting your faith for others, out for others, then all the things that you've been worried about in your own life yeah. will be Amen. met. Amen. Come on. You become servant of all. That's the way. You become servant of all. Jesus was a servant of all. And because of that, we receive everlasting life through him. And we get to be servant. He showed us the example. Amen. We're to wash the feet of the people. Amen. Humble ourselves. Thank you, Jesus. Ephesians chapter 6. Where we left off. Last Sunday. Verse 18. Pray always with all prayer and supplication. We obviously looked up what supplication is. In the spirit. And watching thereunto. With all perseverance and all supplication for all saints. Amen. Watching thereunto with all perseverance. Supplication for all saints. Amen. Watching requires alertness. The way is Jesus always would say, watch and pray. Yeah. One, we're watching and praying for his soon return. But we're also watching and on our guard and ready at attention to do yes. the will of the Father. Yes. Amen. 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 Mark chapter 13 and verse Take heed, watch and pray, for you know not when the time is. For the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey, who left his house and gave authority to his servants. So the authority has been given to each and every single one of us, for we are his servants. And to every man his work, and commanded the porter to watch. Watch you therefore, for you know not when the master of the house cometh, at evening, or at midnight, or at 
at the cock, the, the cock crowing, or in the morning, least coming suddenly he finds you sleeping. And what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. Watch. That must be pretty important to watch. Watch and pray. And then Luke 21, verse 36. Watch ye therefore and pray always. Huh. Watch ye therefore and pray always. There's a praying always there. That you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Right. I want us all standing together before yes. the Son of Man. Yes. 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 So it's imperative that we watch, that we pray, yeah. that we're always praying for all men. Yes. Amen. 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 Yes. Praying for all men. Come on. Hallelujah. Laying down our wants, yes. laying down yes. our will, and taking up his will. Yes. And pleading with the souls of men. Yes. We plead with the souls of men in prayer, but then we'll plead with the souls of men in the streets or wherever we're going. Amen. Amen. And the Amen. more that you're surrendered to the Lord, the more that just comes forth with more power. Yeah. That's right. Because your faith is growing. Yes. And the greater the faith, the stronger the flow of the power. Amen. 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 Faith again comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes also by, by really spending and talking to the Lord because he's going to speak to you. Amen. And it's the word of God. Right? Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So we have work to do, but it's fun work. Yeah. Come on. It's fun praying for him. And he's calling us up higher to pray. You know, there's many times that I'm doing windows and, and I'm praying for, for each and every single one of you. Sometimes, God, I feel like just certain ones of you, I'm just names that I'm just, okay, I'm going to pray. I'm just going to pray tongues. Praying for spirit, praying for strength, yeah. praying for all the saints. And I pray that also that you would pray for me too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Just like Paul says, pray for me. Yeah. That I may more accurately bring forth the word of God. That's right. Amen. By the anointing. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I want to be able to speak out of utterance and not out of my head. Yeah. You speak out of utterance by the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Because that's what's going to produce the change. That's what's going to produce the life. Yeah. Yeah. I'm speaking out of my own head or off, and, and print off some sermon got, getting offline that wasn't even real to me. Yeah. It's just you just getting some head thing. Yeah. Now, because of your own hunger, God may touch you, but I don't do that. I just let you know. <laughs> I pray, I, I seek the Lord about what to bring forth. And then I just said, whatever you want to do, you can mess the service up, God. You can not mess up, but you can take it over. You can take over the service. Whatever you want to do, just take over. You can take over. Change my message. He's done that before. Amen. I had to be able to minister on what I thought I wanted to minister on, or he wanted to minister on. Amen. I want his perfect will. I want his perfect way. I want what he has in order. Amen. Amen. Yes. You know what? I laid down my life for you all. <laughs> there you are. And so I'm like, hey, hold on, what's going on me? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. But I'm wrapping up. Because in, out of Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17, it says that... that we're to watch over the leaders. We're to watch over your souls for, yes. Yes. for I must give an account. Yes. Yes. 
have to get accounts. So yes. watch. That means I'm praying for you. Yes. Yes. And that even stirs me up even more to be more yes. earnest yes. in prayer for each yes. and every single one of you. Yes. Because I want to see you all fulfill God's plan and purpose yes. for your life. Yes. Amen. Because yes. it makes the church do it. And he causes the kingdom of God to be demonstrated more accurately. Yes. When you're fulfilling your plan and your purpose and doing your part, you have your part in the kingdom. Yes. You have Amen. your part in the kingdom. Amen. I, would, I would like, right there, that fits in with, with what God showed you about them having their part. Could we feel it? Right Corinthians 12. And you know, the Lord really is going to hit any insecurity that you may have right upside the head. Right now. So 1 Corinthians 12, 15. We'll go up to 12. Just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all its part, many parts, form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews, Gentiles, slave, or free. We were all given one spirit to drink, even so the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Now, if the foot should say, because I'm not the hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. And we're all part of the body of Christ. You know, the Father, the Father created us and the Father placed us where He wants us to be. The Father is the Father's will. It's His will. And He He showed me this and He really gave me a revelation because we so often hear people saying, we hear it the other way, like, oh, well, you're not the you're not the hand, so you don't belong to the body. But the Lord revealed to me that you can't say that about yourself. You know, you can't be like, well, because I'm not them, I'm not there spiritually, I'm not there, well, then I'm not a part of this. That is a lie from the pit of hell. To pull people out, to leave people insecure, and to leave the body of Christ divided, but beyond that, just bruised and broken. Because what the word says is that if you see that, you don't cease to be a part of the body. So you just become a dead weight. So, and I've had times in my life where I have really felt that. I've, I've dealt with this. I've gone through that and thought, man, where do I belong? You know, I'm not, you know, and you look at other people and it's like, they're doing things that maybe you feel called to do, but you're not there yet, or they just seem so extravagant, and you are just currently called to do the most humble tasks. But if you may feel that way, you don't cease. The Father does not see that you cease in any way to, to be a part of the body. Everybody has a part. Everybody is, is a part of the Father's family. We're all part of God's plan and purpose and family. And He doesn't want us to be insecure. And He doesn't want us looking at what other people are doing or where they're at. He wants us to start where we're at. And homeschooling my kids has given me such a divine revelation of having a good foundation because it really doesn't matter if somebody's in 6th grade, 7th grade, 8th grade, ninth grade. If they don't have the foundations of reading down, then we need to bring them down to that level. doesn't mean anything's wrong. 
It just means I love you enough to shut everything else down, bring you down to the basics, and get your foundation built. And, you know, if, if people don't know one plus one, one plus two, two plus two, two plus three, then they're not going to be able to go up into their multiplication tables or their division tables or go up into geometry, <coughs> algebra. And so it's okay to come back to the basics and say, you know, I belong to the family of God. I am a part. The Father placed me where I'm at. Right. And I'm going to humble myself to whatever it is right. that God wants me to do. Yeah. Now, there's diversities of gifts. There's diversities of anointings. There's diversities of graces. But we each need to be confident to step into what ours is. Okay. And there is just something about humbling ourselves because it's a foundation. So you don't get to certain places with God if you don't humble yourself. That's the very foundation. So you have to go back to one plus one, one plus two, which means humbling yourself before the mighty hand of God so that he can lift you up. But I know that he's talking about prayer, but it was just a revelation that I got, and it was very strong. And, you know, we don't want anybody in this body, because you see it a lot, and... As a leadership, we really want to really communicate and make that very clear that everybody has a part. That everybody, you know, everybody. There, there's yeah. nobody left out. Yeah. Um, and uh, everybody's, you know, welcome. Just yeah. be right with God. Yeah. Just be right with the Lord. And if you're right with the Lord, then whatever you do will prosper and be blessed. When I first got saved, when I was 16, I worked at... Um, I worked at the Krista camps at Island Lake, and I'll tell you what, I was mopping, I'll, I'll never forget, it was one of the most powerful encounters I've ever had with the Lord, and I was mopping the floor at Island Lake Christian Camp. I was mopping the floor there, and I was so happy to be there. I was so overwhelmed with the goodness of God. I was so happy and so thankful to be mopping the floors for the kingdom of God. So blessed. Rather than out in my pride and out in the world and out doing it my way, lost and confused and messed up and without God. And so let's get down to the basics. And I mean, I still have times, you know, <laughs> you got to realize that the, the, the farther that you go in leadership, the more tasks and responsibilities that you have and the more judgment is placed upon your life. So sometimes I'm like, just clean and just be happy to clean. Yeah. Really, yeah. really, really, take my word for it. I'm not kidding. Because the more responsibility on you, you, your walk with the Lord needs to be right on you, right on. It's a tight, you know what I'm saying? Um, but every part, every member has, has a place and there's no room for insecurity. And so if you ever feel, well, I'm not... Yeah, I'm not even in leadership. Even if you feel like, well, just I'm not in leadership, so I don't have a part. All you're doing is becoming a dead weight because you're not ceasing to be part of the body. You're still a part. So we got to keep our attitudes really, you know, humble before the Lord. Amen. Because every part, every part, you can't say I, I have I'm not part of the body. We don't want to be a part of dividing ourselves from that and turning ourselves off because that puts us in a place where they need to be again. We need to be hooked up to the body. There's no other way but to be hooked up to the body. There's no other way. You're stuck with us. We love you. You can try, yeah. you can try to go out by yourself. But then after a while, guess what's going to happen? You're going to miss us and we'll be back. <laughs> we love you. God is showing us out of His Word. Amen. That's right. And it's not hard. Yield to the nature of Jesus. Amen. Anyway, I said all that in prayer. What I wanted to share with that. This is my. 
I wasn't planning on sharing this or anything, but I've used this as a marker to you know, find my notes in, in my you know, little note book thing. And, um, and I thought, how, how, uh, um, how cool it was for, for me to find this is my grandma's uh, prayer notes. And I, I did her uh, funeral, was it two years ago? Was it just last year? Last year? Last year? Yeah, last week. So last week, I did her funeral. It was awesome. It was powerful. But this is her prayer. This is her prayer. I'm going to do the best that we did. This is what she prayed daily. Now, she had other prayer lists that she prayed daily, but this was her last set of prayer lists. Wow. Her last one she had. And, and she would pray over people. Our family, it says... Uh, Pray for my family. I pray first that each one of my family's hearts will be open to you and will desire to do your will and have clean hearts to revere your name, Lord, and recognize the power therein. I pray this for myself also. I pray that each of their minds will be cleared from the clutter of this world so that they can set their uh, something on <laughs> you and what or desires, or, or I think it's desires, on you and what you have for them to do. I pray that a deep hunger for your word will be implanted in each of their hearts and deep within their souls so that they will learn your word and and find it in their what? And hide it in their hearts. Hey, did you like your music? Um, and hide it in their hearts. I don't know how much you just put it off for people to take it. Oh, you rewrote it? That's awesome. And she did it. So that they will not sin against you, against you, God, and will have the word richly, hold up, ready when needed. I pray for all their physical needs and well-being. Now she's about to get that none of these. Diseases or illnesses will come upon their bodies. Father, I pray for uh, your... <laughs> something health. Divine health. So uh, to uh, follow... To flow through their bodies. Minds... Uh, souls, spirits, daily, even uh, those that are ill. Huh? Those that are ill now, sickness be gone. In Jesus' name. <laughs> and Father, I, I know that Perilous times are now here. <laughs> this is too funny. <laughs> On the earth, I pray that my family will be protected and it will, to your word, will respond to your word. Father, and 
your ways. I pray that for their prosperity, that even the, everything, that everything that they touch will prosper because of the seed that they have sown. And I, and Father, you will uh, prosper them, and then shall each. Show something, nothing. Lack, lack nothing. Lack nothing. Lack Thank you. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> that they shall lack nothing. So anyway, that's the prayer. Isn't that awesome? And she prayed that all the time. It was also copied, so it was kind of. And then here's all the names of all the grandkids and all the kids on the back, and she would name them off and speak it. I don't know how often she did that, but. Pretty much every day. Keep them covered with the blood of Jesus Christ. No weapon formed against them shall prosper. Luke 19, 9, Matthew 18, 14. Let my family abide in you, God. This is my heritage. This is my heritage too. 